Hello guys, welcome to the 8th tutorial of the static timing analysis playlist. So in this video, we will continue with the next few set of questions. Coming to the fifth question, design a circuit for a clock frequency divider by 2 using a D flip flop. Given the following information, find the maximum frequency a circuit can handle. So the first part of the question is to design a frequency divider, which is not scope of this playlist. But roughly we will see intuitively how to convince that it's a frequency divider okay and then we will calculate the maximum frequency that the circuit can handle so if you look here i have already drawn the frequency divider this is f by 2 and the input frequency let's say this is a time period t which is equal to 1 by f then we want a 2f circuit which means 1 by 2t this is a twice of time period which will give a uh, frequency divider f by 2 we will get okay so this is the output required frequency and this is the input frequency of the circuit now if you clearly see that let's say at this edge of the clock if the input of the previous state or q bar is equal to 0 whatever it is let's say in this case if q equal to 0 q bar equal to 1 and in the next passage of clock again the flip-flop will detect where the q bar of this will become 0 so in this it will be 0 and at the next passage again it will be one like that so if you clearly see to get the output frequency of this form the inverted input sorry the inverted output of the flip-flop if you connect back to the same flip-flop input you will get an f by 2 uh, circuit so see this is out of scope of this playlist so i'm not explaining in detail how to design a frequency divider circuits and all which we will separately cover in another playlist but for this playlist let's say this is the circuit that is given to you now you need to find the maximum frequency at which this circuit can work okay so for this flop the setup time is given as 6 nanoseconds the whole time is given as 2 nanoseconds and the propagation delay or it is also called as t clock to q delay is given as 10 nanoseconds so from our side we already know that t clock minus t setup time should be greater than or equal to t clock to q plus t um what we call t propagation delay or uh, t combo logic but here since there is no combo logic so t comb equal to zero here no no combo logic like right? this is directly connected to the input so t clock should be greater than or equal to here it is equal to also right t setup time plus t clock to q delay so here the setup time is given as 6 nanoseconds and the clock to q delay or propagation delay is given as 10 nanoseconds so t clock period should be greater than or equal to 16 nanoseconds so the the max frequency means the minimum clock period so the click clock period equal to 16 nanoseconds is our best case analysis point okay so the maximum frequency with which it can work equal to 1 by 16 nanoseconds so it will be 10 power 9 by 16 hedge you please calculate this will be somewhere around uh, um, 10 power 6 thousand by 16 4 4 is a 16 for uh, 2500 so 250 somewhere around uh, for 6 are 24 right some 62.5 mega hedge so the maximum frequency is around some 62.5 mega hertz please calculate it again if i am wrong but 10 power 9 by 16 hertz is the maximum frequency with which the circuit can operate okay so that is the that is how you should calculate for these kind of questions and then is there any hold violation in the above circuit so that is the next question so for the same circuit they are asking if there is any hold violation so how you will calculate the hold violation if you remember in the hold equation we have said that t hold should be less than or equal to t clock to q plus t comb so here there is no combo delay so it is zero so t hold which is given as uh, two nanoseconds here if you see it is two nanoseconds so two nanoseconds should be less than or equal to t clock to q that is 10 nanoseconds t clock to q or t propagation delay here it is 10 nanoseconds so this equation is clearly satisfying so there won't be uh, there will be no hold violation in the above circuit no hold violation so other way to look into this is the flip-flop need 
two nanoseconds at least to process but the data is taking 10 nanoseconds to come so it clearly process the previous data before the next data comes to that flop so clearly there is no hold violation from this even from the equation also it is clearly evident okay next going to the next question so this is little bit um uh, interesting question because it also has the subparts of it so let's understand the question properly so for this flip flop they have given t clock to q delay as 1.5 nanoseconds t setup time as 1 nanosecond and t hold time as 2 nanoseconds and there is a clock buffer given here the delay is not specified and then there is a combo logic which is having a 0.2 nanoseconds and the output of the flip flop is being given back to the input of the same flip flop so that is the question so the first part of the question is will the above circuit work without any violation so that means we need to check both setup time violation and hold time violation condition for this then only we can say that whether if there is any violation or not so in the setup time if you remember t clock minus t setup should be greater than or equal to t clock to q plus t combo delay so here t clock to q is 1.5 nanoseconds plus t combo is 0.2 nanoseconds t clock period minus setup time is given as 1 nanosecond so clearly clock period should be greater than or equal to 2.7 nanoseconds so respective frequency you can calculate but here there is no frequency of operation of the circuit is given so no point of calculating the setup time because we can assume that the circuit is operating with greater than this specific frequency corresponding to this clock period okay i am not going to calculate the frequency because it's not needed so we can check the whole time so if you remember the whole time equation t hold should be less than or equal to t clock to q plus t combo logic so here t clock to q is 1.5 nanoseconds plus t comb is 0.2 nanoseconds but our whole time is 2 nanoseconds 2 nanoseconds is not less than or equal to 1.5 7 nanoseconds so here it is a big violation so this is a hold violation so the first point part of question is the above circuit work without any violation means no it will have a hold violation so the second part of the question is if there is any violation calculate the combinational delay that should be present to avoid the violation so clearly here we have we got the hold violation so what should be the delay the new delay this combo delay should be to avoid the violation okay so clearly 2 nanoseconds should be less than or equal to 1.7 nanoseconds is what we got to make it equal to 2 nanoseconds at least 0.3 nanoseconds delay should be increased so the old delay is 0.2 nanoseconds if you increase it with at least 0.3 nanoseconds then it will be 0.5 nanoseconds and you will have this condition satisfied then 2 nanoseconds will be less than or equal to 2 nanoseconds so you will remove or eliminate the hold violation or you will overcome the hold violation so that's how you should answer this kind of questions okay and the third portion of the question is will delay in the clock buffer affect the maximum frequency of operation so here i already told you they have this clock buffer this clock buffer and they have not given any delay for this clock buffer but the question is if at all there is a delay in the clock buffer will it affect the maximum frequency of operation so if you recall the setup time equation is dependent on the clock period whereas the hold time equation is not dependent on the clock frequency or the frequency of operation so to answer this whether it is affecting the max frequency of operation we should analyze the setup time equation but from the setup time equation if you see the clock buffer is placed from the clock source to the clock event occurrence of the flip-flop where the output is also connecting to the same flip-flop if you see this output is connecting to the same flop right so at this point always for both cycles of clock it is coming at the same point so this delay really doesn't matter because the same flip-flop you are analyzing again in the next cycle also so that's why the answer to this is the delay in the clock buffer will not affect the max frequency of operation so moving ahead to the next question what is clock skew so we have already discussed this in our previous tutorials in detail what is the skew analysis we have done a positive skew analysis as well as negative skew analysis please watch the tutorial if you have not seen that yet but on a vague way of answering this 
the delay in the clock path from one flop to other flop is called as clock skew and this makes more sense when you are analyzing between two flops because the output of first flop will be consumed by the second flop right if such kind of consecutive flops are there then the delay in the clock path from one clock to other uh from one flop to other flop is called as clock skew okay please uh, refer more on this definition of clock skew and you can refer to the earlier tutorial also can hold time be negative okay this is one more question very important question okay so i won't answer this right now because we still didn't cover the negative setup time negative hold time concept so for time being yes hold time can be negative but how it is and how to analyze that or how to visualize that we will be seeing in the upcoming tutorial so please park this question as said for now but we will be discussing this question soon i hope you guys learned something new in this tutorial so these questions are very important please go through them once again and we will be seeing some more interesting questions in the upcoming tutorials thank you for watching see you in the next tutorial